That's why we're using this tool. We can click this verify button and it's going to tell you right away a matching hash. Welcome back to part two. For those who are joining us, you might want to watch part one because you may be confused on what's going on here. So I'm going to be talking on this particular checksum utility. Don't worry, I'll have the URL in the video description so it'll be easier for you to download it. And basically this utility, the reason why you want to use this, you basically want to verify that the file you're downloaded from internet or from a web server or whatever has not been corrupted for whatever reason. It might be corrupted because you have a really poor quality system or maybe you have a really poor internet and your internet service provider during transport corrupted your file when you were downloading it. But I digress. So let's scroll down and there is two versions. I've been using the free version for like over five years. And by the way, this is probably one of the best utilities out there. I have tried so many of them and I think this one so far is the best one. And I'm going to download the free version once again from CNET. Click on that link, click the download button and it starts downloading. You might get a NAD here. And you might want to click at the bottom. No, thank you. Continue downloading. Just make sure you download the right application because sometimes ads are kind of tricky. You, you might download an, an ad file or whatever you want to call it. But after downloading my application here, I can see I'm going to go to the download folder. I'm going to minimize everything else just to keep things clean. And here's our executable. And the nice thing about this executable, I'm going to run it right now. It is portable. I don't have to install anything. Here's the actual tool. And the first thing I want to do, I want to deselect all of these hashes. I, I don't want to generate all four hashes for a single file. That's going to take a very long time and you'll understand why or why I'm doing this. And I'm going to browse for that file. I want to generate a hash for in this case, I want to generate a hash for my windows 11 ISO file right here. I'm going to double click on that. And now I'm going to come back to my download folder. I'm going to open up this text file I made earlier in part one. And here is my hash that I got from Microsoft. I'm going to select copy. It's the 256 secured hash algorithm 256. I'm going to go back to my tool. I'm going to paste this hash and I'm going to check on this hash right here, the 256 and the program is going to start generating the hash for this ISO file, depending how fast or slow your computer, depending how big the ISO file and depending what algorithm you select to generate the hash. This may be slow or fast. In some cases, this might even take up to a minute or over a minute to generate a hash file. So be patient. The next morning. There you go. So the hash has been generated and you can do, you know, comparison of the characters from what's been generated here and what's pasted here, but that's kind of inefficient. That's why we're using this tool. We can click this verify button. And it's going to tell you right away a matching hash. And basically it's comparing the hash I pasted in here from the text file that I got from Microsoft and a hash file that the system, not the system, but the application generated. And for example, if I change the two to the three, just to show you that it works and I click verify again, it tells you another error message. Hash does not matches at this point. If you see this message, you know, that your ISO file is corrupted, you might want to, you know, redownload it in this case, because I manually changed the hash as a demo to incorrect value. That's why I got the error message. In reality, the file is perfect. And that's basically it. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'm out of here.